Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazard of Chess Channel and welcome to a new chess strategy and tactics video. So in this video we'll discuss the endgame stage again. Today we'll talk about a very important topic that I think bothers many of us in the endgame stage. Today we'll talk about blocked out pawn structures in the endgame and how to make progress in this types of positions. So the first, uh, in my opinion, really important principle of this types of positions and I've set up here a beautiful position. Uh, here it was a beautiful and amazing game played by the legendary Bobby Fischer here with the black pieces, the most important principle in this types of position in blocked out pawn structures is to create the maximum activity of your pieces. So of course you see there are not so many spaces that you can use but still there are some spaces and when there are some spaces use the spaces. So of course the knight will not find the best ways here in, in, in the game but use the maximum activity of the knight. For instance in this position the maximum activity of the knight will be maybe even here the move knight to a3. This move has to be considered. Maybe this is in the beginning a bad move, but this move has to be recognized as a potential uh, move here for black. So also look at this. The rook on, on the a file is in my opinion perfectly fine. The queen on a a4 is also per perfectly fine, but the queen has a different idea. Maybe the queen has also a better opportunity to create a new activity, maybe with the move queen to a2. So this also move has to be considered. On the other hand, when we talk about the, the bishop's activity, the bishop activity is so far not good because it's blocked out by its, uh, by its opponent pawn structure. So maybe we can search for a new opportunity, maybe with bishop to e7 and then maybe to let the pawns roll uh, here also on the king side. So you see, um, as I said, there may be not so many spaces in this types of position but you have to use every possible space every possible gap that's in the position here with the black pieces so also what has to be considered and please don't be frightened to do it is to sacrifice some pieces uh, to get the pawn breakthrough motif maybe to let the pawn roll so in this particular position of course possible moves i'm not saying these are good moves but possible moves to create maybe a certain pawn mobility is even for instance the move queen takes b4 of course it's a bad move it's a stupid move but in some maybe different positions this tactic could work and then you let the pawn roll or something so i'm just pointing out that every potential move that creates a breakthrough that creates a pawn mobility new pawn, pawn mobility has to be dis discussed has to be a sort of a tactical idea in your mind then you calculate okay it's bad then i'll search maybe for new opportunities maybe i'll sacrifice something else but you have to consider really really a possible piece sacrifice to create a pawn mobility so also in this particular position i think knight takes d4 knight to c3 bishop to uh, b4 our opportunity so just in order to create a certain pawn mobility so far in the beginning i think this is not possible because white is defending the position white is so far compact on dark square so so far no tactical threats are uh, here in white's position also what we have to also discuss is a common breakthrough motif is a common pawn movement uh, of course in this particular position the only pawn movement that i see is on the king side for instance in this position with the black pieces we can play h6 g5 and maybe let the pawns roll a little bit but white doesn't have to necessarily react here even if you play something like h6 h6 g5 and even if you take here an f4 then of course g takes f4 happens then maybe the files get open here um on on the g file your king could be also in danger so in my opinion pushing the pawns immediately uh, would be also risky and the fourth and uh, maybe not even uh less important than the other principles that we have talked about so far is of course here the king's activity the king in this types of positions should not be tolerated as something that has to be defended only you have to use now also your king in the uh, in in your active play so also like in the minor piece activity or maybe with the queen activity rook activity you have to also search for the maximum activity for the king so the king has to also find the path here in the game to maybe activate itself and then find new attacking opportunities so maybe just for fun pause the video and using these four principles that we have talked about i have written them here also in the right corner so uh maybe using this principle play uh maybe you can pause the video and try to see now here the best really the best continuation uh here for uh here for black so black moves and 
continues to pressure sort of what would you do in this particular position and as i said the game that we see here is a beautiful gameplay by armando acevedo milan with the white pieces against uh, robert james fisher the legendary bobby fisher uh, here with the black pieces bobby played an awesome brilliant beautiful uh, end game here with the black pieces so what would you do okay here bobby fisher realized of course if he plays something like bishop to e7 as we said you can make here progress uh h6 g5 okay it's it's an idea but in my opinion this would be simply too slow this is simply just as i said opening also some spaces in in front of your king now bobby fisher played i think a more aggressive idea he played the tricky move queen to a2 and he's simplifying the game but he noticed that there's simply no further piece activity so as i said he uses now the principle of maximum activity now the queen on a2 is of course on the most active possible square on the board of course the queen will be traded off it's a certain simplification but in order to get a further activity you have to find um new opportunities you have to even undermine your opponent's threats because if the queen is on the board and the game is complicated uh the queen in some lines if you as we said start to push your pawns on uh, on the king side then maybe the queen can get here also some spaces so it's tough tough also for black uh, to make something but what bobby fisher noticed after move queen to a2 uh, is that he could have here a beautiful beautiful path because that's the only gap that we see now in this position so you see all of the pawn structure is blocked out if this pawn would be here on b5 then it would be fully blocked out and i think this game then would uh, end in a draw but there is a path there is a simpler route here that we can use so with through this square we can maybe use further activity we can uh, play on the principle that we gain new new huge activities with our pieces all over the board so after move queen to a2 uh, we have knight to d1 we have king to e6 so you see uh, bobby fisher uses now first of all the king's activity we have queen takes a2 rook to a2 and you see now uh, still black is active on the a file uh, white's rook is paralyzed so uh, milan's uh, um, rook is paralyzed it cannot move it cannot be even traded off it simply uh, blocked out first of all on uh, by its own pawn here on the b file and on the a file uh the black's rook is so far dominating so rook to b2 here uh, armando uh, acevedo milan tries uh to simplify the game by trading off the rooks but now we don't want to trade it off now we're just trying to get our king here more and more active and especially get it on the most active square here that's possible of course it would be the square a4 or maybe even the square a3 and when that happens then i think we can have new chances to create this other principles that we have talked about so far so bishop to e1 we have now king to d7 we have bishop to d2 look how bobby is using now the king's activity we have bishop uh, to e1 knight to a3 liberating now the path uh for the king here now the king is marching towards uh the queen side we have king to d2 king to b5 bishop to f2 king to a4 bishop to e1 and now bobby plays a sort of um it's it's a sort of a zugzwang move bishop to e7 uh also trying now um uh, maybe here some h6 g5 moves but the basic concept here is that white needs now to make a move uh, white has to be now uh, on the move and basically there's not so much that can be done even if you play something like bishop to f2 uh, pardon me knight to f2 then finally i think uh, g5 could happen look at this f takes g5 bishop to g5 you can try this one bishop to e3 for instance is working king to e3 rook takes e1 so you see now i think playing on both sides is perfectly fine because the queens are off the board the king is now on the other side of the board now uh, searching for opportunities also on the king side is a possibility here for for bobby for bobby fisher so after move bishop to e2 uh here acevedo milan played bishop to f2 and now of course we have a knight to b5 here by bobby fisher uh now he can also get hit the king on a3 so this is really the beautiful principle of maximum activity getting the pieces on the most possible active scores in the position really really cool play here by bobby so king to c2 now king to a3 of course look where the king is coming and now after rook to b1 now again rook to a2 we don't want to trade off now the pieces and now uh, after rook to b2 
you can repeat of course the move rook to a1 now we have reached a very important position that has to be noticed here in this particular position we have reached the position of maximum activity there's simply no better activity that you get in this particular position although as we said maybe your bishop after g5 can be included in this game but after again black is a uh, party white is waiting after g takes f4 g takes f4 the bishop still cannot cut to get here into the game so i think this bishop doesn't even have to uh, search for new opportunities in the game because it has really its best activity it's at least attacking both sides rook on uh, on a2 it has simply the best activity as we said after rook to a1 rook to b1 will lead into a perpetual we don't want to of course play a draw when we have such active play knight on g uh, knight on b5 is of course on the most active square so there's simply no better square uh, for the knight and also the king on a3 is on the most active square so there's simply no better square for the king so we have reached now the position of maximum activity when that happens then we have the other principles now it's time to search for tactics now maybe it's even time to, to search for aggressive methods maybe even to sacrifice something now we have to consider every uh, move that's possible even knight to c3 uh, bishop to uh, b4 whatever you like but from this point on you have to now play very, very on tactics so first of all let's solve uh, the position after rook to a2 and knight to b2 if let's imagine white would not play uh, didn't play the move uh, b2 played uh, the move knight to b2 what would you do now in this particular position so what would be now your move again i'm pointing out that we have reached the principle or that we have reached uh, the position of maximum activity so it's time to sacrifice something to let uh, again the pawns roll so pause the video and might maybe try to search for a winning idea here for black if of course uh, armando acevedo milan would have played the game like this what would you do here okay here you have a beautiful possibility of knight takes c3 after king to c3 look at this we have created again now mobility of course uh white has to now stay close to the knight because the knight is uh, pinned now uh but it's uh, also twice attacked by the king and the rook uh now we can play c3 uh white can maybe counterplay this idea with this move bishop to e1 but look at this now we have created again a pawn mobility rook to b2 uh, rook takes b2 c takes b2 and after bishop to b4 king to uh, a2 there's nothing that can stop now this pawn uh the, you lost the piece but you're not promote to a queen and uh this game is really really over here for white so that was the tactical possibility after knight to b2 so as i said knight to c3 and bishop to b4 is winning the game so you see we are again sacrificing something to create a pawn mobility so in the game in the original game here um Acevedo milan played the move rook to b2 again we should search for possible tactics we have reached the position of maximum activity what would you do now again in this particular position okay take your time it's maybe a little bit tougher to see but it's a cool tactic again and after a couple more moves Acevedo Milan resigned okay here again the tactic is knight takes c3 because africa for instance the knight takes c3 uh, then we have rook takes b2 so the knight is not protecting anymore the rook on uh, b2 if you play like in the game king to c3 then we have this one a rook to a1 look at this uh how it was very important to create this spaces because white is lacking in space here white didn't gain any spaces now the knight is uh paralyzed the knight is stuck here to the defense uh, of uh, the, the bishop on on um, uh, f2 and the bishop on f2 is taking over taking the square that white would left now to use in order to escape from this point on it's a one-way ticket after rook j1 actually in this position Acevedo Milan resigned because even if you play king to d2 then of course this is working a rook takes d1 king takes d1 now king takes b2 this pawn will be taken of course even if you're protective the king will get closer will simply take it and again it will be game over uh, here for for black with these two extra pieces on the queen uh extra pawns pardon me here on the queen side so it's simply game over for sure so you see first bobby fisher 
apply the principle of maximum activity. When he gained the maximum activity of his pieces, then it was time to strike, then it was time to sacrifice everything. So search for gaps, don't block out the position uh, through the whole uh, through the whole game because look at this uh, this position could have been different for instance if this pawn would be on b5 if uh, bobby fisher would not create of course at least some kind of a gap in the position i really love to say that this is a gap that we can use in order to uh, get more pieces into the game so bobby found his spaces here activated the pieces when the time came he sacrificed everything and won this beautiful beautiful chess endgame so okay i hope that you enjoyed the study in my opinion really really beautiful beautiful example here by the legendary bobby fisher if you want to know more about chess tactics chess strategy and uh, similar stuff uh, please check out our uh, basics in chess series and also my become a master in chess series videos with some more opening principles middle game strategies and endgame strategies and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and what to say. Chaz is the best, of course.